Hello everyone, welcome to the Mental Health Experience. This channel is going to be a subcategory channel of my wife and I, our business channel, Acts on Health. Uh, we're both chiropractors where we'll be talking a lot, a lot about our experiences within school, a lot about covering research, clinical guidelines, and how chiropractic can help you, exercise variation, and so forth. But I have a passion, and this channel is going to be a huge passion of mine. And that is going to be something about my experiences with mental health. And I don't think mental health gets the attention in the realm of OCD. I also think there's a huge misconception about OCD. So let me just explain a little bit about myself. My name is Nick Panella. I am from New Jersey my whole life. Uh, I am a doctor of chiropractic. My wife is also a doctor of chiropractic. We met before school. Um, I went to University of Central Florida undergrad in Palmer, Florida for chiropractor school. Uh, all my life, I have been different. Um, I had a lot of irrational beliefs. I was very black and white in my thought processes, but I also did things that were very compulsive uh, to rid anxiety. It uh, wasn't until I was in school where I fully developed OCD, chronic debilitating OCD. Now. We use OCD in society, and unless I went through or going through what I'm going through, you know, everyone says, oh, well, I have OCD about my, my room. And um, we, when we use OCD like that, we downplay the severity of OCD. It wasn't until recently the World Health Organization took OCD up one of the top 10 most debilitating conditions to live with. Top 10 up there with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and other neurological disorders, living in an iron lung, OCD was on there. So you have to have the perspective that when people make jokes or say they have OCD, they obviously don't have OCD. They have obsessive perfectionist irrational beliefs, but they don't have the OCD genetic disorder for the most part. So what is OCD? Obsessive compulsive disorder. So being organized does not mean you have OCD. Uh, liking things a certain way does not mean you have OCD. OCD is a mental illness, a genetic disorder, they believe, where you have things on repeat all day long and there's lots of different categories and fears. And then you do compulsive behaviors to rid that anxiety and it keeps you in a loop. So let's use the most famous societal standard of OCD contamination OCD. People who wash their hands 10 hours a day. That is OCD. Um, again, it's okay that when people joke about, uh, they just don't understand. How would they? they? They never have been through it. They don't have the mental disorder. And it's the same thing as people saying, I'm, I'm depressed. When the reality is, they probably don't have major depressive disorder. You know, they're just sad. Um, but that's a different topic. So OCD can be extremely debilitating. People don't leave the home for 20 years. People that won't shake people's hands. People that won't drive their car anymore because they're convinced they killed someone when they were driving. Bring themselves to the police station handcuffed, saying, I have killed someone on the road when they never did, but their brain convinces them they did. That's a disorder. I have somatic OCD, which is a rare subset of fears. I am very obsessed with neutral obsessions. Blinking, saliva, swallowing, stuff in that nature. And my mind becomes hooked and re repeat all day. You're never going to be able to stop thinking about your saliva. You're never going to be able to stop. That thought intrusive plays 24 hours a day. I ended up in a mental hospital. My wife had to institutionalize me. I was highly suicidal. I tried drowning myself in my bathtub. Uh, this is not easy for me to say because most people who know who I am know me as this very eccentric person. Um, I gained a lot of fat. I got up to 30% body fat. I was really in shape for the majority of my life. Um, stopped working out. Um, I, I, I was a mess. I was a mess. And, and, and that's what happens with OCD. If you have the gene for OCD and the gene is expressed through the environmental factors, it's a light switch, a literal light switch. One moment you're like this and one moment you're not, and then it changes um, forever <laughs> until you recover. So uh, you can recover from OCD fully, which is the absence of chronic anxiety and obsessions. To give people an idea of the type of anxiety I've lived with for the last 18 months, 
Uh, think about something you're extremely afraid of, the most fearful thing you can think of. Combine that with a panic attack, the worst panic attack you can imagine, to where you're like, every symptomatology, I had that every moment of every single day for 18 months. Every moment of every day. So it was, uh, it was tough. I've also struggled with severe body dysmorphia, um, which also is a subcategory of OCD. You're obsessed with certain parts of your body. Um, there's a lot of subclinical OCD and uh, subclinical body dysmorphia where people are pretty damn close to being in a bad place. They might not have the genes, so it's not fully expressed. Uh, but nonetheless, people are suffering. And uh, when I was in the mental hospital, my perspectives on life changed pretty drastically. I met people who were paranoid schizophrenic. I met someone with such bad depersonalization, they would talk to the wall. Um, every single thing you can imagine, I witnessed. And I talked to these people in the common room and heard them speak and heard their stories. And, you know, I've always said this, that when someone doesn't have an arm, the human psyche can comprehend suffering because there is a physical component missing. People with mental illnesses suffer in absolute silence. And no one knows it unless they talk about it. And then unless you have something like debilitating OCD, you can imagine it, but it's hard to fully keep, be capable. It would be like me trying to understand someone who has had their legs blown off in Iraq. I can, sim I can have sympathy and I can have empathy and I can have compassion, but I really can't fully understand. And that's completely okay. I don't need anyone to understand the type of distress I am going through through recovery or had really was going through when I was suffering. It's just something that, that's just the way it is for me. And that's just what I, my, you know, the cards in life. So, uh, my father definitely had some undiagnosed mental illness. He was a hoarder. Um, uh, he definitely liked things a certain way. Um, I'm going to do a separate video about the difference between obsessiveness based on irrational beliefs versus OCD because I think it's one of the mis biggest misconceptions in mental health or society ever. Um, just because you're obsessed about something does not mean you have OCD. It's, um, but that's okay. Again, two different things. I didn't know that until I truly developed OCD and landed up in a mental hospital. And I said, why can't I stop thinking about my blinking every second of every day? What the hell is going on with me? Um, that's when it really was like, boop, life changed forever. Um, in a good way though, uh, um, in a, in a lot of good ways. So that is my story about mental health. Um, again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I have really good anecdotal experience. Um, I work with some of the best OCD therapists on the planet. Um, and the awareness for OCD is still in the dark age. The World Health Organization took OCD off the top 10 most debilitating conditions because we now have cognitive behavioral treatment by the founder of Albert Ellis, who created of cognitive behavioral therapy to work towards uncertainty and unconditional self-acceptance. So you're not alone. Um, I can tell you that right now. Anxiety is very prevalent in this society. Um, I would say the research is, 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 is in that anxiety disorders are on the rise. Because OCD is an anxiety-based disorder. It's locked because you're fearful, which comes with anxiety, usually. You can have obsessions without chronic anxiety, but it's not very common. Um, and that's that. So that's what's going on with this channel. Um, I'm, you know, I'm here to answer questions. I'll give advice, unprofessional advice, if anyone needs it. Um, I will steer you in the right direction where I believe, because I am a doctor of chiropractic. We did get some training, you know, master's level psychology, a couple classes in school. But unless I was going through what I'm going through, I really wouldn't have cared um, because it didn't affect my life. And a lot of people, when something doesn't affect their life, they don't care about it until it affects their life. That's just how humans operate a lot of, a lot of the time. Mm. Excuse me. So that is the importance of today's video. I will be posting on this a lot, a lot, a lot. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for listening about my story. Again, you are not alone. So feel free to message me below. Um, you can email me if you want, dr.panella at myaxonhealth.com. Um, I'm always here.
So have a good one, guys.